In this tutorial we're going to use the Part Design Workbench to model a generic connecting block. I'm just going to create a new file. I'm just going to save it and give it a name. switch to the part design workbench okay um, so before we can model any geometry the first thing we're going to do is create a, cont a body container um, to allow us to model a 3d geometry and the first thing we create is a sketch so I'm going to create the sketch in the plan view using the XY plane um, it's best practice to keep this the sketches as, as simple as possible. Um, so for this one, we're just going to create a square um, using the rectangle tool. It's going to create two points and then press escape to close the tool. Um, so now we've got the, the rectangle modeled. Uh, we need to add some constraints. So we can see we've got four degrees of freedom. So we need to get rid of those. So I'm going to select the two um, diagonally opposite nodes and the datum node then using a symmetry constraint that will lock all the points about the symmetrical about the axes and then by selecting two perpendicular lines we can give those an equality constraint which gives us a square and then by dimensioning one side of the square at 30 millimeters we have a fully constrained sketch. So we're going to close the sketch and then we're going to add a pad to turn this from a sketch into 3D geometry. So we'll select the pad tool and the height is 20 millimeters. With the main body created, the next step is to create the four cylinders on top. So to do that, we'll create the top face, create a new sketch and then we'll create a single cylinder by drawing a circle. We'll select the circle, constrain the radius to five millimeters. Then we'll position it equally within this quadrant uh, at seven and a half millimeters vertically and seven and a half millimeters horizontally. So with the sketch fully constrained, we can close the sketch and then we can pad the sketch to create a cylinder at 3.5 millimeters tall. With a single cylinder created, we can now use a pattern tool to create the other three. So I'm going to select the polar pattern tool, select the pad we've just created and then we can add occurrences to create the other three. Okay. For the next step, we're going to create the cavity in the bottom of the block. To do this, it'll orbit round till we see the bottom. Select the bottom face, create a new sketch. Now we're not going to try and do anything too smart here. We're going to replicate the workflow that we used on the first sketch to create a basic square constrain it with a symmetry constraint about the origin, select two perpendicular lines with an equality constraint and then add a single dimension to constrain the whole sketch. So we want the walls to be one millimeter thick here. So the first sketch we made was 30 millimeters, so we'll make this one 28. And then we'll close the sketch. So rather than creating a pad, we're going to create a negative. So we'll create a pocket, 19 millimeters in depth. Then we'll click OK. Set our view and save the file. The next feature we'll create is the internal cylinder. So we'll select the internal face, 
create a sketch and then we'll create a circle on the origin and then we'll constrain that circle with a radius of 6.25 millimeters. Looks good. So we'll, it's fully constrained. We can close the sketch and we can create a pad with a length of 16 millimeters. And then we'll save the file. The basic model is now complete, so we can now start to revisit parts of the model and add details. So one thing I'd like to do is add a pocket to each of these cylinders. Because of the way we've created it as a single cylinder and then um, use the pattern feature, we can actually benefit from this by editing the original sketch. And if we go ahead and add the size of the pocket to this sketch, so we'll create a circle uh, constrain it to four millimeters and then you notice when we close the sketch it's actually affected all four of those cylinders um, so we could now go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom so we can choose the original sketch and we can edit that sketch by adding a second uh, circle can constrain the circle to five millimeters. Check it's fully constrained, close the sketch. So we'll just go ahead and save it. What we can do now is go through and add any finishing features that are required. Uh, that could be something like a fillet or a chamfer. Uh, the reason I do these at the very end of the modeling process is because if you ever have to revisit parts of the model and make adjustments, um, you often have to delete the, these finishing features. And if they're the last couple of features in the model, you can delete them without, effect, without affecting anything else in the model and it just makes it a lot more simple. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go through and select a few edges um, by left clicking on the edge and holding control and walking through the model selecting any edges we want um, to add a fillet to. So we'll select all those edges and we'll select the edges of these cylinders as well. So we're going to contain all, the, the, all these edges in one um, operation. We'll change the radius to half a millimeter and we'll accept. Let's change the view and then we'll save the model. And there we have it, a generic connecting block 3D model. Um, so we've covered a few very basic concepts for, of the part design workbench in this tutorial. Um, this tutorial was aimed at new users, um, beginners, people new to FreeCAD or 3D modeling in general. Uh, I would like to go on to create more uh, detailed, complicated models. Um, so if there's anything you would like to see in the future, um, leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching.